Now, whenever I heard ZF, I always thought it was about steering systems. But now that I'm here for a technical day at the ADAC Center here in Germany with ZF, I've discovered it's all about a lot more. It's not only steering systems, it's transmissions, it's chassis, it's electrification. But what's caught my interest and really has me peaked is this 9 HP Range Rover. Well, it's a 9-speed transmission that we're going to first see in the Jaguar Land Rover cars. And I'm going to test it myself and find out more. Well, cruising at 120 kilometers an hour and at under 2000 RPM, that's pretty darn good. And that's what the 9-speed is all about. Getting the vehicle to be up to 16% more efficient and of course, smoother shifts and better acceleration. How does all of this work is what we wanted to find out. Now, ZF has always made longitudinal gearboxes and as a transverse, this 9-speed was a first for them. 75% the cars have uh, a front uh, engine and uh, it's a new market for ZF to develop, uh, develop a new transmission for this market because uh, we are one of the best uh, in the engine uh, axle transmission and now we are searching new markets. Fitting the 9-speed with more gears into the same space as, say, a 6-speed was never going to be easy. Just in packaging or were there any other challenges yes. that you faced? Yes, no. Mainly in Ma Mainly in packages. The other point is uh, the dock clutch. Mm -hmm. It's uh, absolutely new mm -hmm. in the uh, transmission for personal vehicles. It's only known from the uh, trucks. And uh, that's one reason why we could reduce the package. Uh, we had uh, four clutches and two dock clutches in this transmission. One torque converter. And uh, the main idea is uh, the intelligent uh, combination of these clutches and the dock clutch. The gearbox will come in two versions for a torque range from 280 Nm to 480 Nm. The boffins at ZF worked hard to make this gearbox fit into the same amount of space as the 6-speed. And though it's marginally longer, it weighs a considerable amount less. Talking about it won't be as interesting, so let's take a look at a video of the engineering that allowed this compact packaging and efficient gearbox. It manages this by using a nested planetary gear set with 9 speeds four simple gear sets and six shift elements, two multi-disc clutches, two multi-disc brakes and the real innovation here which is the two dog clutches, a first for a passenger car. It reduces drag loss and allows the compact design. It also has a new compact hydraulic vein type pump and a torque converter that reduces vibration for more comfortable starting and shifting. The increased gear ratios of the 9 HP means that cruising is possible at low engine speeds which allows for smoother shifting as well. Basically what I see is when I'm cruising I'm always just about below 2000 RPM. Yes. Which is, uh, fantastic yes. because it, it will increase my efficiency and, and uh, therefore the emissions will seamlessly as well which is fantastic there's no you don't feel, feel a, the shifts a lag. Yes. you don't feel the shifts and you don't feel a lag when it when it comes you know when you're putting your foot down for you can't feel the shift of the dock clutch because it's not uh, synchronized you can also do uh, shifts over, over more gears perhaps a 74 or a 743 or a 97 you don't have also one step by a step. Okay, so you can come down. You, you, you can down from down to from nine to seven, or from if you wake kick down, you, you are in the seventh gear. Then you can uh, shift to the fourth directly. Okay, that's so uh, you have no loss in the speed. And if you want to, to kick down and to, to accelerate, you have a better acceleration. Okay, immediate acceleration. Yes. Yeah. Well, this 9-speed gearbox will be seen in the Merc E-Class, the Jeep Cherokee and the Range Rover Evoque in its first applications. 
And after all the testing of transmissions, we changed gears to something quite different. So what I'm doing right now is using a tablet, trying to concentrate on talking to you and doing that, um, and actually parking a car that has a trailer behind it. And if you look that side, there's nobody inside the car. Well, we're going to catch up with Nicholas and he's going to tell us all about how this works. So to activate the system, I just touch the trailer that is displayed okay. on the uh, tablet and um, the trailer and car will start to move. Okay. We can choose um, up front the speed with which he will move okay. and it's automatically So you can controlled. preset that? I preset that, I control everything and when I touch the trailer on the display, we start okay. and the system is automatically controlling the vehicle speed I preset. So I can uh, walk with the trailer, trailer? look okay. what is behind, I see okay. everything and it's really easy. So I basically just, you're just, I just moving the trailer? The yeah. trailer in the direction I want to um, go. So I see everything, I'm yeah. behind the trailer, I can position myself. And now when I'm in stop position, I just... Release it. Release it. And yeah. We so are that's perfectly parked. parked. The system works on a ball joint sensor that is integrated into the towing system of the car. It connects and communicates with the power steering and helps to maneuver the trailer into a parking space. With my head still reeling with that experience, I jumped into a 5 Series for a quick spin to figure out more on active driving dynamic assist systems. This is a so-called, for us, experimental car. We uh, installed uh, several um, active electromechanical systems in the car. So that means uh, we have uh, uh, an active roll stabilization bar to prevent uh, the roll okay. behavior. We have an active steering. Uh, we have a rear axle steering, um, we have a uh, uh, torque vectoring system okay. to uh, switch the torque, torque from, from, tire from, the, from tire to tire to push the car into the curve and uh, these systems are all connected so the steering knows what the rear axle is doing and so on so they interact okay. within milliseconds okay. to, um, to uh, improve the driving by, uh, behavior and the safety. After a short demo lap, I got to try the system myself. Hands behind the wheel, we set off in the normal 5 Series setup for the first round. Now the 5 Series is pretty good dynamically, so it was an easy course and I was wondering how different could anything else be. I wasn't ready for the change when the system switched. The ZF torque vectoring rear axle considerably increases driving dynamics. The system distributes the drive torque individually to the rear axle wheels and generation of the wheel differential torque is independent from drive torque so it can also work during coasting when the driver is not accelerating. And in this case the system was working in tandem with a host of others. With a steering that was also continuously adjusting to inputs, a roll stabilizer that balanced the car better around the corners depending on the amount of lean and all the systems worked together to make this car another animal. So now everything is working? Steering. Everything is everything is working yes and in the uh, the curves with a little bit more velocity or if you hear shaking uh, the steering wheel you feel uh, it's more active. You don't have to uh, have less steering work. Take that corner easier for sure. Yeah, yeah. But in this case the system was working in tandem with active steering which optimizes steering angle at the front axle and corrects understeer or oversteer and also with the active kinematics. Now this system has an actuator on the rear axle which provides a steering angle of a maximum of 3 degrees. At low speeds it steers the rear wheels contrary to the front wheels giving the vehicle a higher rate of yaw and reducing the turning circle making the car more maneuverable. But at higher speeds it steers the rear wheels in the same direction as the front giving it more stability and better dynamics. So basically you could have your normal luxury car behave like a sports car yes, when yes. you wanted it. There were a host of other technologies on display like the active damping for motorbikes and the low cost rear damping system for smaller cars which is very interesting to us in India. But there's just so much we could fit into one episode. 
Well, it's been an amazing learning experience for me today and I think most of you watching must have learned quite a bit too. Some technologies that really interested me, especially the trailer parking assistant, I think it could translate into a parking assistant for almost anything. Imagine if you could stand outside your car and park it that easily. It would be a great application in our country. But apart from that, a lot more that I've learned over here. Um, ZF steering is going to come in your Tata Nano next. So a lot of things for the cars of the future, a lot of things that are going to happen tomorrow that we've seen here today.